Hey there, I'm Tanya Huber. I'm one of the regional trainers for the Mountain West region. And today I have the honor of talking to you about something I care about deeply. And it is sharing Jesus with all kinds of people because there are all kinds of kids and adults in our communities that we get to love. And how do we share with people who are not at all like us? So let's begin with the why and let's read the Bible. Romans 12, this is where Paul is talking to the Roman people and it's in the NLT version, starting with verse nine, it goes like this. Don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong, hold tightly to what is good, love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. And then it says, rejoice in our confident hope, be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Verse 14, bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other and don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. So let's actually pray. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would help us to be fully attuned with your people and their needs and ourselves so that we can love them well. Help us to have the boldness and the initiative and the humility to make all of this happen. Uh, speak to us today in Jesus' name, amen. So let's review our approach according to the scriptures, not just the part I read, but all scriptures. It says love others. Don't pretend this love has to be genuine. Honor one another. Acknowledge who people are as people. You can say, I see you and work hard at this as though you're doing it for the Lord because you are and don't be run over with pride and don't think you know it all have humility this is a consistent theme through scripture consider others better than yourself don't just look to your own interests but to the interests of others if others are happy understand why and be happy with them if others are weeping Understand why it is that they are weeping and weep with them. What a way to value others and to honor them than by joining. Enjoy the company of ordinary people because we know the word said, blessed are the meek. They are the least of these. This is throughout scripture. But we have to get it to go from here to here to here so that love and honoring and belonging are happening in every corner of our ministries. Because we all want all kids to meet Jesus. That's why we're with Young Life. And likely, that's why you're probably watching this video. We would say all kids are welcome in our clubs. I've never met a Young Life leader or a committee person who says, oh, you know, we only want uh, some kids in our community to hear about Jesus. No, you want all kids to hear about Jesus. You might even have a meme or an invite or a flyer that says, hey, come to Young Life because everybody is welcome. And when we talk about every kind of kid or the kids who are the other kids, we mean probably kids who are different than the normal kids, kids who are different from the majority of the kids at your club, or maybe just different from the leaders at your club. These kids could be introverts. They could be kids who are under-resourced or socially awkward. They could be kids who speak different languages or kids who are of different cultures. And of course, we mean that we want to reach the kids who are regularly coming to Young Life. We want them to encounter Jesus too. We do not want to stop reaching the kids that we are currently reaching. So I'm going to say all kids. All kids are the regular kids and the other kids collectively. So we say that all are welcome. But do all kids feel welcome? And are we willing to make the changes in our meetings so that all kids feel welcome? 
The situation is usually this. We want all kids to come to our club or our meeting, but we don't want to change our club so that all kids feel welcome. For some reason, we find that we are unwilling to change things that we are doing to honor and acknowledge all kids. We say all kids are welcome in our spaces. You see, it feels like loss to us to change the music or to cut funny skits or the hype you up song so that we have time to serve a meal or, or maybe even to change some traditional illustrations in a club message. It, it feels like loss to change these things. Like Sweet Caroline might not be a song that Latino kids have heard traditionally in their families. To cut that would feel like loss. Change feels like loss to us because we're humans. And honestly, it can be hard to do. Our heart and our mind come disassociated with our hands. We're unwilling to do the things necessary to get everything to agree. But here are a few things that I think can help. The ABCs, admit, believe, commit. Now, if you're a veteran leader, you probably just cracked up a little bit, but stay with me. This is A, admit. Admit you have a lot to learn. Some of you just don't know what to do and it's hard for an outsider like me to tell you exactly what to do. But all kids are your teachers. Learn the culture of all kids and all of the facets of it, the Gen Z nuances, the influence of a specific ethnic culture. Learn the ins and outs of poverty culture if your kids are poor or the culture of affluent kids or athletes at your school. The most important thing here is a posture of humility. You must be open. And this is a constant thing. You won't actually <laughs> arrive. It's continuously learning about the culture of kids because it is constantly changing. And then another thing that's really important before I forget is that you need to understand your culture too, because you need to understand how your culture is different from the culture of all kids. It's just a high, higher level of thinking to compare and contrast and to draw bridges between the two. Besides, it's going to help you understand why you feel so committed to the way that you do things because your culture influences the way that you operate. And when you understand your culture, you will understand the difference between doing things because they are scriptural or doing things because they're your culture. So I'd love for you to explore all facets of your culture. Did you come from middle class? Did you come from an Anglo family? Uh, who, who ha, maybe your, your family's worked so hard to overcome poverty or tragedy. Maybe you come from a family with a single mom. Maybe your first generation college family. All of this plays a role. And you might not even realize that you have a culture. I've been working with college age leaders in central Washington and it's always like a fabulously multicultural experience. We have Anglos, we got Latinos, sometimes some native folks and, and everything in between, all kinds of mixes. And um, oftentimes we say, hey, tell me about your culture. And always, always, every single time, there is one Anglo or white person who's like, I don't, I don't have a culture. And the rest of us, we're kind of like, <laughs> like really like no man you have a culture your culture is that you're you're all about succeeding and working for yourself and we're able to list the things of white culture but sometimes when you're in the majority culture you don't even realize that you have a culture and so it's really important that you take time to think about your own culture because you have one and my favorite learning question is this how was that for you? It's a question you can ask a parent who's peeking in to see what club is like, or you can ask it after your first meal at camp, or maybe when kids are lingering after a Zoom club, or after your group's first time of having a real spiritual conversation. You say, how was that for you? Admit, you have a lot to learn because we do. B, B is believe. 
believe that the gospel is good news for all kids. You might just have to figure out how or why it is good news, but please hear me. I'm not telling you to change the gospel. There is one gospel and it is spectacular. It is good. But when I was a girl, I heard the gospel from a 70 or 80 year old white lady who had a lot of love and was as tough as nails. And she told me, God has a wonderful plan for your life, which I could see was not true, as evidenced by the subsidized housing that I was living in by a dad who hardly knew me and a mom who left me supervised by three older brothers just so she could hardly put food on the table. Oh yeah, <laughs> and all my favorite people died. God did not have a wonderful plan for my life as far as I could see. That good plan was for other people. Sister Fulweiler's version of the gospel just, just was something I couldn't believe. I couldn't receive it. My poverty, my personal trauma caused me to not hear what Sister Fulweiler was preaching to me. And I know that something similar can happen when we speak to any kid, like to teen moms. If you say, hey, God has a wonderful plan for your life. They'd say, that's a bunch of BS. I asked God for help and he didn't help me. But how about this? What if he said, hey, there is a God who loves you no matter what. And he will never leave you no matter what you go through. The good, the bad, the ugly. He's with you because you are beloved. Now that's the same gospel. We need to be aware of who the deliverer is of that gospel and hear who the hearer is of the gospel because what you heard when you heard the gospel might not be good news to all kids. So you got to think, what is good news to kids in poverty? What is good news to the affluent kids? What's good news to native kids? What's good news to shy girls, to Malia, to Damien? What's good news to Jasmine? What's good news to Jose? Believe that the gospel is good news. You might have to figure out how to deliver that good news. You can ask. Also, also believe that you can minister cross-culturally because with humility, you can minister to those who are not like you. Start at the beginning and admit that you have a lot to learn and think, why not you? Lastly is the C. C is for commit. Commit to the cause of saying that kids are welcome and making them feel welcome. Commit to change. It takes time. This is not gonna happen overnight. It's not gonna happen with one club, two clubs, three clubs, probably not Zoom clubs. Don't quit. Commit to the Great Commission of making disciples of all nations. And I'm gonna tell you some good news. You're gonna receive power, Acts 1-8 power. Acts 1-8 goes like this. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses and shared in Wyoming, Missoula, Montana, and Lewiston, Idaho, and to the ends of Washington, to the ends of the earth. You will make mistakes. You might make a fool of yourself, but the last time I checked, Young life leaders are really good at making fools of themselves. You'll have to change the way you do some things and it might feel like loss, but look at all that you have to gain. All kids are welcome, but how do we go about helping them to feel like they belong? We admit we have a lot to learn about all kids and about ourselves. Believe the gospel is good news to all kids and commit to the process. Pray that God will bless you and keep you as you bring the very good news to all kids.